Hi there, our highly valued, treasured and esteemed viewers and listeners and welcome back to your channel of choice. This video I am about to present was compiled by Dr. Nath Arua, a clinical pharmacist by training and profession who is the founder of Progressive Pharmacotherapy Consultants. The premier virtual clinical pharmacy institute for capacity building for healthcare workers. The Virtual Clinical Pharmacy Institute with a Difference, where patient safety, medication therapy management and optimal clinical outcomes are very crucial and non-negotiable to us. Here we seek to remain your premier source of crucial tips for high-impact pharmacotherapy services. So, on behalf of the Institute, I humbly urge you all to sit back and spare me part of your very precious time to share with you very useful tips which may prove very, very handy in your line of duty. I now welcome you all to part 223 of our Pharmacotherapy MCQ series which majors in infectious diseases. And the first question reads, GUC, an 18-year-old man presented after eight weeks of an intermittent fever, arthralgia, headache and pruritus. GUC had been born and brought up in the Central African Republic, but had emigrated five years earlier. GUC had not had any foreign travel since. GUC did not have any other medical problems, nor did he take any regular medications. GUC was heterosexual but denied any unprotected sexual intercourse. GUC had never injected drugs. On examination his temperature was 38.1 degrees Celsius. GUC was slim but not cachectic. GUC had painlessly enlarged lymph nodes in his anterior and posterior cervical chains, axillary and inguinal chains. GUC's spleen was enlarged 2 cm below the costal margin. His liver was not palpable. Investigations were done and the results were as follows. FBC, renal function, liver function unremarkable. He was HIV-1 and 2 AGAB negative. His blood cultures were negative after 5 days. Regarding the blood film no parasites were seen. His X-ray of chest showed clear lung fields. Lane aspirate showed numerous elongated, flagellate protozoa with posterior kinetoplasts seen on Gimza stain. Regarding his CSF, protein was 0.32 grams per liter, the normal range is 0.15 to 0.45 grams per liter, white cell count 15 per microliter. The normal range is equal to or less than 5. The red cell count was less than 5 per microliter. The normal value should be 0. No organisms seen. So my question to you is, what is the most appropriate treatment for GUC? Is it A. Albendazole, or B. Diethylcarbamazine, or C. Ivermectin, or D. Nifertinoxaflornithine, or is it E. Pentamidine? I will give you 10 seconds to choose the correct answer to this question from the listed options. And the correct answer is D. Nifertinoxaflornithine. I will explain why. This is first line therapy for second stage Gambian's human African trypanosomiasis, and has been included in the WHO's essential medicines list. It has been a milestone improvement in the treatment and outcomes for human African trypanosomiasis. Please proceed to the next question. And the next question reads, FTT, a 46-year-old Thai woman presented with a sudden onset headache and right-sided weakness. FTT's temperature was 36.5 degrees Celsius, blood pressure 124 systolic 74 diastolic and heart rate 88 beats per minute. 
FTT's Glasgow Coma score was 14 over 15. FTT was drowsy but rousable. FTT had a right-sided flaccid hemiparesis. An urgent CT scan of her head was arranged. Investigations were done and the results are as follows. Eosinophils 5.9 times 10 power 9 per liter. Her CT scan of head is shown in the image in the next slide. Pause the video and carefully scrutinize the photo showing a CT scan of FTT's head before progressing to the next slide. On further questioning her partner revealed that FTT had also had a prolonged history of recurrent superficial swellings on her arms and torso. These would last for one to two weeks, resolve then recur weeks to months later. FTT had been born and brought up in a small village in northern Thailand, but had emigrated six years previously. FTT had spent three months of each year since then in Thailand. So my question to you is, what is the most likely source of FTT's infection? Is it a. Unwashed salads? Or b. Uncooked vegetables? Or c. Uncooked pork? or d. Uncooked beef? Or is it e. Uncooked freshwater fish? I will give you 10 seconds to choose the correct answer to this question from the listed options. And the correct answer is e. Uncooked freshwater fish. I will clarify why. This is a clinical case of nathostomiasis, evidenced by the recurrent cutaneous swellings, the epidemiological risk factors associated with Thailand, and the investigative findings. Nathastoma spinogram is acquired by eating undercooked infected poultry, snake or freshwater fish, or by drinking water contaminated with infected cyclops crustacea. Please progress to the next question. And the next question reads, FMK, a 28-year-old woman presented with a five-day history of diarrhea, malaise, abdominal pain, nausea and flatulence. FMK was opening her bowels on average 12 times per day. There was no blood or mucus. FMK attended a regular swimming class with her nine-month-old daughter, and the pool had been closed one week earlier after an outbreak of diarrhea. Stool microscopy, multiple red oocysts, 4 to 6 micrometers diameter seen on modified acid fast stain. So my question to you is, what is the most appropriate treatment in FMK's clinical scenario? Is it A. Ciprofloxacin, or B. Metronidazole, or C. Nitazoxanide, or D. Paramomycin, or E. Trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole? I will give you 10 seconds to choose the correct answer to this question from the listed options. And the correct answer is, C. Nitazoxanide. I will justify why. The pathogen here is Cryptosporidium. Its first-line treatment is with nitazoxanide. Please progress to the next question. And the next question reads, BMK, a 27-year-old man presented with three weeks of fever, headache, malaise, abdominal pain and constipation. BMK had returned from a six-month trip to India two weeks before his symptoms began. On examination, BMK was confused on admission, but with no focal neurology or meningism. BMK's temperature was 39.2 degrees Celsius. His heart rate is 75 beats per minute, and his blood pressure is 110 systolic 56 diastolic. A CT scan of the head and lumbar puncture were performed, with normal CSF findings. The CT was unremarkable. BMK was started empirically on intravenous ceftriaxone, fluid resuscitated and admitted to the high dependency unit. Three malaria smears at 12-hour intervals were negative. 
24 hours after admission BMK developed worsening abdominal pain and he had peritonitis on examination. BMK was taken for an exploratory laparotomy, as shown in the photograph in the next slide. Pause the video and carefully scrutinize the photo in this slide depicting the exploratory laparotomy done before progressing to the next slide. Blood cultures on admission grew gram-negative rods at 48 hours. So my question to you is, what part of the bowel is most likely to be involved? Is it A. The cecum, or B. The descending colon, or C. The duodenum? or D the sigmoid colon, or is it E the terminal ileum? I will give you 10 seconds to choose the correct answer to this question from the listed options. And the correct answer is E the terminal ileum. I will clarify why. Gastrointestinal perforation, usually at the terminal ileum, is the most serious complication of typhoid infection. It manifests as an acute abdomen or as worsening of abdominal pain accompanied by shock. Perforation is associated with a high mortality risk and needs urgent surgical intervention. Please advance to the next question. And the next question reads, DKO, a 44-year-old woman presented to the travel clinic to seek advice prior to a six-month expedition to Zambia, Botswana and Malawi. DKO had had a wide local excision of a breast carcinoma five months before, with clear margins, and had received five weeks of postoperative radiotherapy to the breast and the axilla, commencing six weeks after her surgery. What travel vaccination is contraindicated in DKO's case? Is it A. Bucoral oral cholera vaccine? Or B. Meningococcal ACWY conjugate vaccine? Or C. Rabies human deployed cell vaccine? Or D. T. D. I. P. V. combined vaccine? Or is it E. T. Y. 21 A. oral vaccine? I will give you 10 seconds to choose the correct answer to this question from the listed options. And the correct answer is, ETY21A oral vaccine. I will clarify why. The oral typhoid vaccine TY21A cannot be used in immune-compromised patients and pregnant women, and antibiotics should be avoided seven days before and after immunization. Booster doses are recommended every five years. Please progress to the next question. And the next question reads, RKL, a 41-year-old man returned from an eight-week trip to India. RKL had had unprotected oral and anal sex with two new male partners while he was traveling. Ten weeks after his return he developed dull pain in the upper abdomen and a high fever. RKL's symptoms had started abruptly. The pain was intense, and radiated to the right shoulder. RKL had associated rigors and profuse sweats. RKL also noted that his clothes had become loose, and that he had a dry cough. RKL had not had diarrhea. On examination, he was thin and in discomfort. RKL's temperature was 39.9 degrees Celsius. RKL was markedly tender on palpation of the right upper quadrant and epigastrium, and his liver was palpable three fingerbreadths below the costal margin. Chest examination revealed dull percussion over the right lung base. Investigations were done and the results were as follows. White cell count was 15 times 10 power 9 per liter. Neutrophils 13.4 times 10 power 9 per liter. Eosinophils 0.2 times 10 power 9 per liter. Alkaline phosphatase was 346 units per liter. The normal value is 45 to 105 units per liter. CRP was 217 milligrams per liter. 
the normal value is less than 10 mg per liter. X-ray of chest showed raised right hemidiaphragm, small right-sided pleural effusion with loss of the right costophrenic angle. Stool microscopy was negative. Ultrasound liver showed a round, well-defined hypoechoic mass in the right lobe of the liver, diameter 8 cm. Blood cultures and serology are requested. So my question to you is, in addition to metronidazole, what therapeutic agent should RKL receive? Should it be A. Albendazole, or B. Ceftriaxone, or C. Ciprofloxacin, or D. Paramomycin, or should it be E. Prazicantel? I will give you 10 seconds to choose the correct answer to this question from the listed options. And the correct answer is D. Paramomycin. I will justify why. This is a case of an amoebic liver abscess. This is generally managed with a tissue amoebicide such as metronidazole, and a luminal agent such as paramomycin. Please proceed to the next question. And the next question reads, CKM, a 47-year-old man developed fever and headache one week after returning from an eight-week holiday to South America. CKM had stayed in a retreat in the middle of the Amazon jungle. He did not seek travel advice before his travel, and had not taken any malaria prophylaxis or travel vaccinations. CKM had stayed in a wood hut with palm leaf roof. He slept under a bed net, but he ran out of mosquito repellent. He had been well while there. CKM's symptoms had persisted for four days before he sought medical attention. A fellow traveler had informed CKM that she had been diagnosed with malaria. On examination he was alert and oriented. CKM's heart rate was 88 beats per minute, blood pressure was 110 systolic 74 diastolic, and his body temperature was 37.1 degrees Celsius. CKM was thin, but there was no palpable lymphadenopathy or rash. Examination of CKM's cardiovascular, respiratory and abdominal systems was unremarkable. Investigations were done and the results were as follows. Hemoglobin 114 grams per liter. The normal value is 130 to 180 grams per liter. Platelet count was 137 times 10 power 9 per liter. The normal value is 150 to 400 times 10 power 9 per liter. His serum creatinine was 74 micromoles per liter. The normal value is 60,110 micromoles per liter. Malaria antigen was positive. Her malaria film is shown in the photograph in the next slide. Pause the video and carefully scrutinize the photograph depicting her malaria film before advancing to the next slide. So my question to you is, what is the most appropriate treatment? Is it A. Artemethalumefentrine, or B. Artesianate plus doxycycline, or C. Chloroquine plus primaquine, or D. Quinine plus clindamycin, or is it E. Sulfadoxine pyrimethamine? I will give you 10 seconds to choose the correct answer to this question from the listed options. And the correct answer is, C. Chloroquine plus primaquine. I will clarify why. This is the recommended treatment of choice for Plasmodium vivax infection currently according to the British Infection Association. Primaquine is required to clear the hypnozoid stage of infection in order to prevent relapse. Please note however that resistance to chloroquine is increasing at an alarming rate. Please progress to the next question.
And the next question reads, DKK, a 54-year-old man presented with gradual onset epigastric pain, weight loss and general malaise. DKK had moved to the UK eight years previously. DKK was normally well and did not take any regular medications. DKK drank minimal alcohol. On examination he was a febrile and cardiovascularly stable. There was no rash or palpable lymphadenopathy. DKK was mildly icteric. There were several spider nevi over DKK's torso and mild gynecomastia. Investigations were done and the results were as follows. Neutrophil count was 1.3 times 10 power 9 per liter. The normal range is 1.5 to 7.0 times 10 power 9 per liter. Platelet count was 115 times 10 power 9 per liter. The normal range is 150 to 400 times 10 power 9 per liter. Eosinophil count was 0.7 times 10 power 9 per liter. The normal range is 0.04 to 0.40 times 10 power 9 per liter. Serum alkaline phosphatase was 168 units per liter. The normal range is 45 to 105 units per liter. Serum alanine aminotransferase was 56 units per liter. The normal range is 5 to 35 units per liter. Serum total bilirubin was 52 micromol per liter. The normal range is 1 to 22 micromol per liter. Serum alpha fetoprotein was 4K U per liter. The normal range is below 10K U per liter. Regarding imaging see image below. There was a large low attenuation mass in the liver with irregular margins. No clearly delineated walls visible. Central necrosis and irregular internal calcifications present within the lesion. Calcifications also visible on the surface of the liver. Pause the video and carefully scrutinize the image in this slide before advancing to the next slide. My question to you is, what country carries the bulk of the global burden of this disease? Is it A. Argentina, or B. China, or C. Kenya, or D. Peru? Or is it E. Russia? I will give you 10 seconds to choose the correct answer to this question from the listed options. And the correct answer is B. China. I will clarify why. This is a case of hepatic alveolar echinococcosis, an infection with the larval stage of echinococcus multilocularis. It can cause severe hepatic disease and, rarely, metastatic disease. Echinococcus multilocularis is restricted to the northern hemisphere. The European endemic area has expanded, but the global burden of disease lies in China. It is estimated that 91% of new cases globally each year occur in China. Cases usually become symptomatic after an incubation period of 5 to 15 years. So there you have it, our highly esteemed viewers and listeners, that brings us to the end of this video. If it benefited you in any way, kindly remember to give it a thumbs up, to like it and to share it widely with your peers. Please leave your comments at the bottom. And if you haven't yet done so, I humbly urge you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. I would like to promise you all that the very, very best is yet to come. Thank you very much for viewing this video. On behalf of our senior colleague, Dr. Nath Arua, I sincerely appreciate your partnership, continued support and kind collaboration. We look forward to interacting with you in the next video, which will be part 224.